funniest part is, half of these wires aren't even used. All right, now that the bell housing is all wrapped up, we throw in some paint on it right now, some steel paint, same paint that we use on the chassis. We're gonna get those AEM EGT sensors wired up. So before we put the transmission on, it just makes sense to get those uh, run up around the backside of the head. And they will be nice and safe. So this is them. Tight tolerances in there, but they fit. A little more room on this side of the steering craft. But so yeah, we got them kind of tied together. Left and right banks. We'll have to figure out which one is which before we plug her in and go from there. This is why I would never do this before. It slows things down. We got a little time and we gotta do it. Settle on in, there we go. Got a couple spiders coming through. Do not mind this rat's nest of a chassis harness. I didn't make it. I want to redo it. So we're feeding all the EGT sensors through, or wires I should say. All right. I'll do the, I don't know, maybe it would be good to do the wiring now because it's early and fresh. I hate wiring. So might not be a bad idea to just knock it out. And I get my length set with the zip ties. Back through. Like I said, everything about cars, get to do it twice. It's the best part. So, see, we got this little plug. Screw the little terminals in there. And this is our little K type module. Red, negative, yellow. And then these guys plug right in like that. And now, rinse and repeat. Final step plugging all these little guys in. So, we got. Six. There we go. There we go. Number two, four, five, six. All loomed in. Looking good. Right through the firewall. Out there, and I'm just gonna put some heat shield on all that. And now we can put the transmission on. We put some heat sleeve over this. A little close to the downpipe, wanna make sure it's okay. Up and over the top, plenty of room. A couple peak clamps, hold everything nice and tight, away from everything. And so, all good to go. Gonna throw the bell housing on next. Put our painted uh, scatter shield on, transmission, mount it up. Both the same in for good. All right, we are now moving on to the plumbing on the chassis. We're getting ready to finish this thing up and get the snake party all wrapped up. There's not too much left to do. We used to have this um, dash 16 feed over here on the um, passenger side tunnel along with the 212. So the way I have it is the 16 comes out of the radiator, goes down into this pump and the pump pushes it forward all the way up around to the front side of the engine. So this is the other side, pushes in here, runs through, comes out the heads. And what we did was we have a 12 here and a 12 there on each head. We used to just slam them together to a 16 right up here, but we actually wanted to let it flow a little bit as that hot water is happier to come back here and then we wire it together back here to a 16 before it goes back in. A little extra volume instead of having this Y right up there at the front. And so with that being said the fuel lines used to run up to the driver's side we used to have them come right out of this bulkhead loop over here and run up this side and then the thing that i noticed with that is that we pick up the you know the fuel rail on the back of the head and then our fuel pressure regulator is mounted over on the right side and this big 16 line used to run up from here yeah from out of the pump you know run over the drive shaft and then all the the passenger side all the big lines up one side really congested and then it would come up and it would cross over out that way so we had the fuel lines crossing over this way we had the water line crossing over that way and it just made for a big mess on the top side back side of the engine what we decided to do was move this big water line to the driver's side but the problem is this will interfere with the exhaust and the drive shaft if we just put a straight fitting on or anything else so what we're doing is making a little extension instead of just the adapter to the dash 16 we're going to weld a little straight onto it so we actually push this fitting out to land right about here and it's gonna tuck this line nice and tight all the way up this side here, away from the drive shaft, away from the exhaust. And it'll just be a lot safer, cleaner, and a little more organized under the car. So we have the fuel lines here, the next thing to get redone because with rerouting these over up the passenger side, the lengths are a little different. So one of them's too long, one of them's too short. Beachwork sent out some fresh hose for me, so 
wouldn't hurt to replace some of these lines anyway. Um, anything that has the slightest dent or kink in it, we just replace the whole line. It's not worth uh, risking the engine with um, you know, some old plumbing, so. We're gonna play with that for a little bit. Get this snake party wrapped up today. I'm going to finish up the wiring. There's a few more things to button up on the top end. I got uh, to redo a couple of these lines to our new radium fuel pressure regulator with the pulse dampener. This actually will help smooth out the pulses of the fuel pump and make that fuel pressure way more stable. So from here, it'll go down and out the back, back to the tank. This line will come over and around underneath it to the rail. And yeah, you can see back here, it's a lot cleaner. This line runs up and over and around the engine. We'll get that mounted up so it's not touching this hot stuff. Put a little P-clamp right here, hold it away from it. But this line used to run over and across the back side of here and then dip down on that side, making it very difficult to get to everything. So now it's just a lot cleaner being over here just on the one side. You actually have a lot going on back there. There's uh, four fitting connections. There's like three sensors back there. We got the dual lambdas back there. So there's uh, a lot going on. So we wanna make sure we have as much room as possible so it's easier to work on at the track. All right, we got the lines all run through the car. Feeling really good about it. Um, Nate Dog made this little extension piece to get this 90 to clear the tunnel. Nice and tight all the way up the side of the transmission, all the way up to the front, up and out and around. And then over on this side, we have the return water lines, the two 12s, and, and then the fuel feed and return, um, two 8s. Things on the fuel side, it's pretty pumped on. Getting that all done and in the car, plenty of room. We're gonna throw the scatter shield in next. Um, I was just relocating these O2 sensors. Scatter shield's in the way, so we're gonna raise them up to about here-ish. Picked up some O2 bungs from Burn Stainless right around the corner, nice and convenient. And just keep feeding this dude some metal. So I'm just gonna keep keep at this. We got our down pipes. We're moving our O2 from here to up here. Like I said, it's gonna get up and out of the way of the scatter shield and get it on the back side of it up near the motor. And then once he finishes welding those down pipes, we can throw the whole exhaust on. We should have the subframe done by tomorrow, which means we can put the subframe in, put the diff in, put the axles in, put the suspension in. Pretty much ready to go at that point. Uh, in the meantime, we took this for a quick little test drive. And she's together and running and ready and feeling really good. I still got a few more stickers I gotta put on there. We got a big NOS going on the hood and a couple little highlight colors are gonna throw on the front end, some extra orange and blue to brighten up the front end. But I'm um, really digging the stripes. So once this is 100% uh, done, we'll just apply it right to this car. You know, you can see a couple of stickers already thrown down, the ones that we know are gonna be um, in those places. So just waiting for um, a couple more body panels to come back. Uh, obviously put the front end on there and get the stripes going. But yeah, feeling really good about the car. It's gonna be sick. All right, now to drill a nice hole for an O2 bone. Like I said, I got these from Burn Stainless. They're nice little recessed bungs. And you need to drill a hole. This looks like about three quarters of an inch to get like a nice round hole instead of just, um, you know, hogging it all out. And there's this tool called a rotor brooch. What it is is a bunch of tiny little hole saws, but they're not just like regular hole saws by cutting wood and whatever. They're specifically made for metal. And this goes from seven eighths uh, every eighth up to one and a half. And there's also a small diameter one that goes three quarter all the way down. But um, it's super strong, they're really durable. And so what I do is I drill a little eighth inch pilot hole first, plunge that in there, and then swap this bit. And you get a super clean cut. And I think I'm just gonna pour it. Now, let's just take a little guy. Yeah, it fits in there perfect. It's just a super clean cut, just in case. There's another cool little tool. So it just has a little sharp blade on there. And this whole thing will just pivot inside this handle. It works great for like when you're doing like intercooler piping, things like that. But it works good on steel as well. So you're just kind of cutting that right off. Takes all your little burrs off. And you don't have any burrs shooting down your exhaust. There you go. I got the waste gates and the turbos mounted up all tight and right. We got the whole rear end all together now. Took a little bit of time. 